Hi, Dr. Jim here. I've decided to take off on a kind of a new track. I'm going to do a five-part segment on something that's near and dear to me, and that's the care of moms and babies during labor and delivery. I've been delivering babies and, and doing this for over 30 years, and I, I still love it. But I must say it's always great when the baby turns out uh, meeting our goal, which is a healthy, happy, uh, which is a healthy, happy baby. And so I'm gonna, the focus really is going to be on fetal monitoring. I know that's kind of a mystery. Uh, you, you go into the hospital, they strap you down with these devices, and away they go, and they're just continuously, or we're just continuously uh, focusing on that uh, monitor strip. And sometimes I think uh, moms and dads must wonder, do we care about the patients that's lying there in the bed? So the question becomes, to monitor or not monitor. And again, the goal is to have a healthy, happy baby. And, and that's the reason we use fetal monitoring to at least try to ensure that, that that happens. First, we must determine the risk when we make a decision whether or not to monitor. Does the mom need continuous fetal monitoring or can we do um, intermittent monitoring? Well, there are several factors that play into this. First of all is, has the mom had a baby before and delivered vaginally, or is this her first time, and will her pelvis accommodate a vaginal birth? We are concerned about how large the baby is. Uh, will the baby fit through the mom's pelvis? So, th so that's an issue. Is the uterus going to work properly to push the baby down the birth canal? And then finally, what's the baby's position? Is it breech, which is unfavorable, or vertex, which is head down, and favorable and, and, and position that we want. There are, uh, f there are fetal factors. Gestational age, is this premature or post-dates? How has the baby grown? How big is the baby? What's the status of the amniotic fluid? Is the baby breech? And uh, very importantly, is there any evidence of meconium, which is a substance that the baby passes through their uh, intestines, that suggests fetal uh, stress or distress. And then there are maternal factors. There's diabetes. Does the mom have blood pressure? Is she obese? What's her past obstetrical history? Does she currently have uh, fever? Um, is there any vaginal bleeding? Uh, does she desire a trial of labor after a cesarean section or a, uh, a vaginal birth after cesarean section? And um, uh, what are her issues around medications that she's taking, any drugs that she's been using, uh, and the like. So those are all really important factors in determining whether or not uh, a mom should be continuously monitored or intermittently monitored. And then finally, of course, there's, there's the examination. Uh, doing the maneuvers to determine how big we think the baby is, whether or not the baby is breacher or head down or vertex. Uh, there's the uh, issue of um, ob observing the mom's vital sign at the uh, vital signs at the moment. Again, is there any bleeding? Uh, is there any passage of meconium? Is the uh, bag of waters intact? What are all those factors, and how does the uterus seem to be contracting and behaving during the early part of uh, of labor? And that's the that's the uh, subject of my next segment, which will be on uterine contractions. So we're going to talk about that in segment number two. In the meantime, remember the goal is a healthy, happy baby, and my goal is a healthy, happy you. This is Dr. Jim. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next segment.